Thought for the day, my brothers and sisters. Today is going through the book of Proverbs, chapter 27. When I came to verse 23, you read there where a shepherd should know the condition of his or her flock. Um, often when we think of shepherds, we think of pastors of a church, and that's true. I also think it implies anyone that's under the authority of someone else, like a parent should shepherd their children. Uh, I think of how civil authorities, government officials who, who have power, like a president or a senator or someone like that, a governor, should be a good shepherd to the people underneath them. Uh, an employer, a boss at work, should be a good shepherd towards those that are under them at a workplace. And sadly, the Bible speaks about in Ezekiel chapter 34, where there are many uh, shepherds who do not really take care of their flock. I've worked with troubled children now for close to 30 years now between a group home and a public school system. And I've seen the effects of children not having the proper care and shepherding from their parents. Um, I've worked at a job now for over 23 years in the public school system, and I've seen bosses and how they talk to their employees. It's very condescending, uh, try to bully them, intimidate. Um, how oftentimes pastors or churches don't even know their flock under them. They only see them on Sunday morning, and basically that's it for the rest of the week. But despite all the flaws of the people in our lives that should have been shepherds, we need to be reminded that there is one good shepherd, the chief shepherd, which is Christ. First Peter chapter 5 verse 4 is a reminder of that. Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 10 verse 11 that he is the good shepherd. David, Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can read scriptures like Matthew chapter five, uh, Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty-six, where Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, when He walked this earth, He saw people like sheep without a shepherd. Isaiah chapter forty, verse eleven, and Revelation chapter seven, verse seventeen. You can look at those scripture verses again. You will see that word "shepherd" implying that God, through Christ, is the true shepherd. But as I said today, we live in a society where government officials are not leading the people right. They're not guiding them and causing the people to live in peace. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2 says that when the righteous are in power, the people flourish, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. Here in America, I know many Christians, including myself, we groan over what's going on in our country today because those in authority are not leading righteously. They're not being good shepherds. As I said before, you could go through uh, the list of people in your own life that you've seen uh, that should have been a good shepherd, maybe a parent or a pastor, maybe um, a boss. And again, they didn't treat you right. But my friends, we need to be careful. As Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 7, when people were ready to stone a woman because she was caught in the act of adultery, he said, he without sin cast the first stone. We ought to pray for those who are in authority over us, not throw stones at them. First Timothy chapter two, verses one to three tells us we ought to pray for those who are in civil authorities. We ought to pray for those in our churches, pastors, elders, deacons. I've been one in the past when I was younger as a Christian, often criticizing those in authority in the church. Well, now I start to pray for them more speak less listen more listen to them maybe they give good advice on sunday look at the good qualities of those that are in authority in your church pray for them where they might be lacking that god would help them only god could help them you can't if a, somebody in your job is treating you wrong my father my late dad used to say and it's stuck in my head as he got older and became more humble and he became a christian and a follower of christ he would say those who treat you bad, hit them with a prayer and not with a chair. A little rhyme, but there's truth to that. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ walked this earth, when people treated him wrong, civil authorities that were over him on this earth, even though he was the ultimate authority, he humbled himself. He didn't fight back. He didn't go tit for tat. He didn't 
looked to slap someone on the cheek when someone slapped their, his cheek. He prayed for them. He had compassion. Even on the cross, when people were treating him so bad, he would say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. My friends, that should be the mindset that we have as Christians. And today is Thanksgiving. I know here in America, it's a holiday we celebrate once a year, but as Christians, every day should be a day of Thanksgiving. My prayers and thoughts go out to all of you that you would have a blessed Thanksgiving with family, friends that you might have, do have, but ultimately be thankful to God, your Savior, through Jesus Christ, that you have forever. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. Let us be thankful. Let us be humble servants, Lord, of those who are in authority over us. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my friends, and stay strong in the Lord.